Let's talk about Shea. He was an absolute superstar in this tournament. 24 and a half points per game, six boards, six assists, 1.6 steals. One thing that I don't think is being talked about enough is his the amount of turnovers that he had. He had 11 total turnovers in the <laughs> tournament, which is insane. I mean, for, for reference, you had Luca, I think he had 38 turnovers in this tournament, who kind of like played a little bit of a similar role to Shea. Shea just didn't turn the ball over. He's under two a game. I think he's at 1.4 turnovers per game in the tournament, which was just insane for the amount of like passing and double teams and traps and just so many things to just stop him. I mean, Team USA threw everything at him. He still turned it over one time in that game. That to me, obviously his scoring and his his pace and everything, but just his ability to carry the ball was just, wow. Like I just couldn't believe it. A uh, super duper star uh, shows you that the all NBA first team last year, more likely the start of something than the peak of something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, you know, why people in Canada, he's not the only reason, but he's a big reason why it's like, okay, like U.S., you want to bring your best players? That's cool. We got a guy too. Uh, yep. like, like he's a legitimate, you know, could be the best player on 20, 21, 22 NBA teams right now. And Canada, you know, since Steve Nash, has just and Steve Nash when he starred for Team Canada was not two time MVP Steve Nash he right was, he was a different guy like Canada's never had that guy at, mm-hmm. at you know at the close to the peak of his powers who would be one of the best players in the world and, and mm-hmm. that's what Shea was like the way he you know I hate to reduce the game uh, the tournament to moments but like. In overtime against the U.S., he had that, you know, step back three pointer that dusted. I believe it was Mikel Bridges that hit the floor. Uh, The go ahead shot against Spain was just a simple ISO at the top of the key. uh, Lost his man, takes a step back long, too. And those are superstar shots. (laughs) They're like, you know, no matter how much you lose your guy, like even uh, those are difficult shots, not shots you want many guys on you know planet earth taking and the fact that you know i don't think a single canada basketball fan not that they were sure they they were going in but nobody had a problem with them and that's because he's a superstar he dominated in the mid-range he found a way to you know not every game but found a way to get you know the teams into foul trouble which is obviously huge in in fiba basketball with uh just the five fouls i mean you know dylan brooks had that go the other way in in certain games. Um, He was unbelievable. And even though he put up those gaudy numbers, a lot of Canada's games started with him sort of feeling out the game, letting other guys take control. And so often it was him in the third quarter sort of uh, taking, you know, really taking a hold of the game. And I I know you get to watch this a lot, being based in Oklahoma City, you know, covering Mm -hmm. the Thunder, the thing that I just haven't seen as much because I'm so focused on the Raptors is he is just almost genius level in transition. Uh, yeah. his, his combination of vision, but just his length and change of speeds and, and physicality for, a, you know, a, a kind of a, a slender guy or a comparatively slender guy. That was really a joy to watch uh you know super special player uh as everybody listening to this probably knows or <laughs> or at least very well should know yeah the efficiency is becoming like the thing because he's able to get the free throw line he's almost automatic 8.9 free throws per game in this tournament at 88.7 percent 63 percent from two and these aren't just, I mean, these are tough shots. <laughs> Majority of these are like really tough shots where he's having to stop and start and slow down. And his signature thing is just that he looks like he's about to hit the gas, puts a guy on his butt, and then he can just go. Or he just sends a guy flying. And then he's like, now I have all the space. It's just a, uh, It's he does it with just deception. You know, it's it's was, it's so much fun to watch. And this was a team, and Oklahoma City is a team that isn't like, overflowing with guys space in the floor right like yeah. he's, he's finding his way into crevices or or even where there aren't crevices he's getting the angle just to get a foul call without you know necessarily the advantage of a bunch of floor spacers 
working with them. And, and you know, that's why so many people, uh, a part of why so many people were curious to see what would happen if, if Jamal Murray had played, like even in yeah. a, even in a reduced like off ball role, like his gravity would have, you know, certainly changed the outlook and uh, of a Canadian offense. And, uh, you know, Canada is, isn't a country that's like overflowing and shooting, but the just, you know, and, and there were some guys who, you know, most notably Dylan Brooks, who were like, ah, you know, I sort of yeah. like this. I like this FIBA <laughs> line. Let, let's talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> um, but, um, but, what he was able to do given the limitations of the roster and that's no shade on the Canadian team, but like, yeah, there were lots of better, it just, just a great performance. And uh, I don't think it's too much of a Homer take and, and, you know, I don't want to offend a new Raptor, but like he was the most valuable player in that tournament. And, and yeah. I don't think it's really a debate. Uh, yeah. I think he probably, you know, if it were more of a, that, you know, a season long award as opposed to a, you know, tournament type mm-hmm. thing where it's always going to go to the best player. Uh, I think he was the guy who probably made more of a difference in this tournament than anybody else. Yeah. I don't disagree with that. 